Today, I get to say some of my favorite words, which are backed by popular demand. You speak and I listen. You wanted this team back. They are as beautiful as they are knowledgeable about plant-based nutrition and their recipes are easy, healthy, delicious, and, and really appealing to the eye. They are the mother-daughter duo from Vegan News Daily, Elspeth and Kaylee Feldman. They're broadcasting from two different cities and here they are today to make a delicious whole food plant-based flatbread with a pest and a balsamic and for dessert, chocolate cherry truffles. And as always, you can get the recipe simply by emailing them at veganewsdaily at gmail.com. Take it away, mother-daughter duo, Elspeth and Kaylee. Hey, Chef AJ. Thank you so much for having us back. It's such an honor to be back on your show and to teach a few little recipes that we have here. Um, we're going to be doing two wonderful summer recipes. One is I call it a summer flatbread. I could also call it a farmer's market flatbread because I pretty much go to the farmer's market and put everything on the flatbread. Um, and then for dessert, we have chocolate cherry truffles. And I'm a big fan of cherries and I know there are a lot of cherry lovers out there. So we'll get to the recipes in just a moment. Um, I'll let Kaylee introduce herself. Okay. Kaylee? Thank you so much. It is wonderful to be here, Chef AJ. We love you so much and we love your show and all the incredible Work that you're doing. Um, it's an honor to be here with my mom cooking together in the kitchen. This flatbread recipe is so simple and fun. I made it for my husband this week and his entire family loved it. They are not vegans, but he is. And they just like could not believe that the crust has only four ingredients, totally gluten-free. So let's get cooking, mom. All right. Okay. So this flatbread is, um, like Kelly said, super easy, super quick, and really nothing to it. And it can be made in many different ways, but I'm gonna show you a summer flatbread that I like. So the first ingredient is one cup of quinoa. I had actually soaked the quinoa overnight. You can soak it for you know about four hours or so. And if you have a high-speed blender, Vitamix blender, you can get away with a whole lot less of soaking. So I like to soak my nuts and seeds whenever I can. Um, and so I have one cup of quinoa that I soaked overnight. And to this, I'm going to add a quarter cup of water and just add that in. And I like to pour it into the um, blender jug and try and get a, a bunch of the seeds that have caught on the side. I also add two cloves of uh, fresh garlic. Let's go in. And I have a teaspoon of oregano and um, some Benson's Table Tasty salt-free seasoning. You can use salt if you do use salt. I prefer not to. Um, or you can use any other salt-free seasoning. And if there's any other particular herb or spice that you want in here, you can add that too. So you, one of those recipes, again, that you just make your own. And I am going to make a little blender noise and maybe Kaylee can tell you a few little fun facts about flatbread. I'm just gonna blend this up into a batter. Kaylee? Awesome, thank you so much, Tom. So we have some facts about flatbread. Um, and so the earliest evidence of people using fire to cook is from the Neanderthals and Homo sapiens around 75,000 years ago. But flatbreads only emerged around 70,000 years ago. So let's fast forward. So flour and water were traditionally was used to make flatbread and they would be heated on warm rocks. And this has been a staple in humanity's diet for over the past 5,000 years. So they originally um, came from ancient Egypt and ancient Mesopotamia, which is modern day Iraq, where the Sumerians discovered that edible grains could be mashed into a paste and then baked and hardened into a flatbread. So they weren't alone. Many cultures have had different versions of flatbread from Naan in Afghanistan and India to tortillas in Central and South America to the Piandina in, Ro in Italy. And flatbread has been produced just about everywhere. So American flatbread began as a gift to friends. So let's start making some gifts um, to share with your friends and family. Okay, so all I did in the little break was I blended this up in the Vitamix. And now I'm going to pour out the batter onto a um, parchment lined baking sheet. So this is just um, parchment paper. And I find it works better. Often I use a silicone lined baking sheet, a silicone lined mat, um, silpat mat. But I find for this flatbread that the parchment paper works better for peeling it off. I'll show you what I mean in a moment. Um, so I, I use this is a, a fun little tip. I know a lot of you make this already, but here's a fun little tip. You just take a, um, two knives and place it on each end of the flat of the parchment, each end of the tray, it'll weight down the parchment paper so that you don't have um, 
the paper wrinkling up and then the batter getting all, all crinkled and then you have a non-flat flat bread. Anyway, here's the batter. I'm going to pour it in here. So you can see it's pretty smooth. It's like um, kind of like a pancake or more like a crepe um, consistency. And then I simply roll, the, I hold on to the knives with my thumbs and I roll the um, baking sheet from side to side and carefully try and get the batter to spread. But I want it to spread evenly so that it's not going to have um, thin, thin and thin sides to it. Otherwise those will burn, uh, those will cook too fast and burn. So anyway, so I just spread this out and then I'm gonna pop this into the, um, the oven. It's 425 degrees and I'm gonna put it in for about um, 20 minutes before I check on it. So that's going in the oven. I will set a timer because I'm well known for forgetting to check on things in the oven. Um, so while that's in the oven, I'm going to show you how I make the pesto, which is what we're gonna put on top but I'm gonna turn it back to you if you have any questions whilst I just bring over the pesto ingredients. I actually have one question, Elspeth, because I've made a quinoa flatbread using an, in a recipe by Jill Dalton, who's been on the show, and, and it's great. However, my husband's allergic to quinoa. Have you ever tried it with any other grain? Because I tried millet and it just didn't do it as well. Yeah, I have not honestly tried it with any other grain um, because I love quinoa so, and I haven't had any need to. Yeah, I imagine millet will be, wouldn't be the, great, the greatest texture. Um, but yeah, I, um, no, I don't know what else you could try. Maybe lentil, right? Oh yeah, I, I do it with lentil, but it doesn't come out. The, the lentil is more like a, a naan. And in fact, I do that like with my Indian recipes, I make it, you know, spicy and curry and stuff, but the, the lentil is a little bit softer. So that's, um, it's not really crispy, like, like the, the quinoa. So yeah. thank you. Thank you. I'm going to just grab the, uh, pesto ingredients and I'll be back with you. All right, cool. I can tell you guys a little bit about Vegan News Daily if you want, what we've been up to the past few months. So I've got some little slides here I can share um, about how we got started with all the cooking and sharing and working together. So um, my mom and I started working together in the past uh, year. We've been teaching many different cooking demos for the past few years at places like Whole Foods, but we came together as a family with my dad as well and decided to create an online publication called Vegan News Daily. So we're really dedicated to sharing how to create delicious plant-based recipes and also share plant-based news. So we love featuring different brands and companies and people who are doing exceptional things in the vegan and plant-based food world. So you can check out our website, see what we're up to. And if you'd like to be featured in a story or an article, you can email us at veganewsdaily at gmail.com. And we love to help you share your story and your message. Um, so my mom and I have been working together as a team in the kitchen for the past 10 years. We have so much fun together. We've been vegan for almost nine years in the fall. We all went vegan together as a family nine years ago, inspired by my brother, Kyle, um, who's two years younger than me. And um, as I mentioned, my mom and I have taught cooking in schools, whether it's in middle schools or high schools, and also to adults um, at a lot of different places like Whole Foods and things like that. My mom's also created a wonderful cookbook for um, happy, wonderful holidays that are plant-based called Pardon My Turkey. This is around for Thanksgiving recipes. So you can get that on her website, uh, thespeedyvegan.com. And here's our family in the middle with our delicious plant-based feast. We'll definitely come back on the show around October, November and do some of our Thanksgiving recipes for you guys. Um, so my husband and I, we've spent a lot of time traveling in Costa Rica, teaching yoga and wellness retreats and um, helping people eat more plant-based and raw foods. So when quarantine and the pandemic started a few months ago, my mom and I got together and thought we really need to do something to help inspire people to eat plant-based foods. So we created online plant-based cooking classes. So our first series was in May called Meals and Mocktails in May. Um, and it was wonderful. It featured three different themes, Italian food, American food, and Mexican food. And it was so much fun. Every show we'd all bring on a mocktail and then we would teach our guests how to create the delicious meals. So all of our classes are recorded. So you can go and um, you know, purchase or watch our old series on our website on Vegan News Daily. The second show that we hosted was called Sweet and Savory Summer, and that featured uh, breakfast and brunch recipes, all plant-based, delicious Mediterranean recipes, again, plant-based, and Asian recipes. So these were wonderful, and what we were really most proud of was seeing 
the wonderful photos from our members, inspiring families, you know, parents would come on the show with their kids to watch as well. And um, we also love offering bonus content to our members in our Facebook group. So something we're very passionate about. And we were able to raise over $2,000 for food banks. Um, one of them is local to us and in Annapolis, Maryland, which is uh, where I went to high school. So now I'm gonna turn it back to my mom and she's gonna show us how to make the pesto. All right. So um, I like to make pesto in a food processor. You can also make it in the blender if you don't have a food processor. But um, I start off with a zucchini. I have about, you can use a small zucchini or about one cup of um, zucchini. So I add that to the food processor. And then I have about two cups of um, fresh basil. Um, it's a great recipe for summer because everybody's gardens are just full of basil. Um, or if you don't have a garden, you can um, grab a bunch at the farmer's market. So I have about two cups here. Um, two generous cups because pesto is a wonderful thing to have on hand. Not to have a lot of, but um, just to have on hand. Um, next up, I use spinach. Always a great way to just get extra greens in. And the spinach will add a little sweetness to this as well as an extra pop of green. Um, I also add an, about three, four cloves of garlic. Um, always a great time to put garlic. And then I use some nutritional yeast, about four tablespoons of nutritional yeast. And um, this is the Benson's Table Tasty. This is the uh, salt-free seasoning that Chef AJ taught me how to make. And this is the salt-free seasoning we use in our house. I love it. So putting that in. And you can put about a teaspoon or whatever you think you want. Um, next, I use the, this is the source of fat that I use. So I use about two tablespoons or so of uh, pine nuts and walnuts. Um, and again, you can get the recipes when you email us at uh, veganusedaily at gmail.com and we will email them out to you. So those go into the food processor and I'm going to um, put the lid on and just give it a little whirl and help. I'm not gonna just, let it go. I'm going to pulse it a few times so that it can combine. And then I want it to be a slightly chunky texture. Um, oh, one ingredient I forgot. Lemon juice. Let me do this. I love this, this tool. I always tell all of our cooking class members that this is the tool to have. A few people have gone out and bought one and they are happy. So squeeze some lemon juice into here. Um, that should be about right. And that's it. And then I'm going to pulse it and get this oil-free pesto going. Actually, uh, Ka uh, Kaylee, I wonder if you can answer this question. Uh, well, one is, uh, is can it be frozen, the flatbread, after you make it? And Rich wants to know if you could make it on a flat griddle instead of baking it. Ooh, there was a chef once that was, uh, Kim Campbell was making pancakes and she was using this griddle. So I'll, I'll let you or your mom take that. Okay. So frozen, I, I don't think frozen would work. Um, really, I, I've never tried it because we never have any leftover, but I will try today. So um, I'll post about that somewhere. But um, and on a griddle, it's going to stick, you know, so... I would say no, but you can live dangerously and try. Why not? Yeah, we'll try. I'm it gonna make some more noise. We'll try it frozen, and we can um, we'll post in the YouTube comments if it if it ends up working frozen. And I was gonna also say for those of you who might have a nut allergy, not able to eat walnuts, you can also use avocado in this if for your fat source. If you don't want to use walnuts or something like that, when I made this for my husband and his family this week, I just used. Uh, whole avocado instead of using the walnuts and it turned out really wonderfully when you're using avocado the pesto is not going to be able to store in the fridge as long because it's going to eventually go brown I would say within like two to three days max um, you could keep it in an airtight container in the fridge but after that it's not going to store as long as the walnut pesto but it still is very delicious um, and wonderful substitute. Have you ever thought of doing a fashion show uh, Kaylee Kaylee because uh, again compliments on your jewelry this time as well as last time, your earrings especially. Okay, so these again, they're, they're for my same friend. Her website is Adorning Aphrodite. I think it's adorningaphrodite.com. And um, she's, we've, I got these in Costa Rica. She's 
an amazing artist and creates all the crystal jewelry herself and she does custom orders. So for those of you interested, check out her website. Um, just incredible earrings and necklaces and all of that stuff. <laughs> well, maybe she should come on the show. And Robin wants to know, can herbs be added to the flatbread? Yes, I add, um, I, I used oregano, um, dried oregano, but you could probably use um, any kind of, uh, you could, thyme would be good in it. Um, herbs de Provence would probably cover everything. I, I use herbs de Provence a lot and that would be a wonderful addition. So yes, nice question. Yeah. Um, I have the pesto all done here. So I just wanna show you what the consistency is like. And the way I like to store my pesto is in a, um, I use a ball jar so that I can, um, you know, just put the lid on and pop it in the refrigerator and pull it out anytime I need it. So about um, 10 days to two weeks, I would say, is a good amount of time to save it in the refrigerator um, if it lasts that long. I use it on uh, sandwiches for my husband sometimes for to just add a little summer flavor to um, a hummus sandwich that I might put in his lunchbox. Um, he puts it on his pizza all the time. It's great on flatbread and pasta. And this is how I store it. And that's it for the pesto. So this will go on our flatbread. I'll show you that next. That's nice. Uh, Robin is saying the flatbread would probably be good dipped in some of California balsamic vinegar, just like they used to do it. Well, they probably still do it in Italian restaurants when they would dip it in oil. So this is a great alternative. And Maria wants to know if you guys have any favorite kitchen tools that you recommend. Oh, I love all my kitchen gadgets. Yeah, I'm a um, bit of a William Sonoma junkie. Um, we're still a little top as well. But I have, um, well, I love my Breville food processor. Um, the, the pesto could not be made in a, a blender, um, and for me, Vitamix is king. Everyone thinks I get commissions from Vitamix, but I don't. I just, you know, preach about them all the time. So Vitamix would be my first spend. It is a big spend, but it's going to—they're they're wonderful. They last forever. Their customer service is fantastic, and um, couldn't live without a Vitamix. Um, in fact, I have two, and. Um, Food processor is super handy. I use it more times than I thought I ever would. Um, but little gadgets, I love the citrus juicer. I love the um, Tupperware garlic chopper that Chef AJ turned us on to. Um, if you go to Chef AJ's site, I think she has a link there for Tupperware. Um, and it's a really, really great one. Um, and um, the pit remover for the cherries is another little gadget I'm going to show you. I'll show you that next when I make the chocolate cherry truffles. So should I move along with this um, topping for the pesto, I mean for the flatbread, or should we wait for the flatbread to come out of the oven and I'll show you that. Whichever you prefer. There's a lot of people on that have taken some of your classes at one or more and they say they love them. And Cynthia says, was there a nut used in the pesto? The nuts that I use today, I use pine nuts and walnuts. I don't love the flavor of pine nuts and they're super high fat, but I love, um, I do like walnuts and they add a nice uh, bunch of omega-3s. Another, another way that I make it is with um, pepitas, pumpkin seeds, raw uh, pumpkin seeds, pepitas. They're little green seeds and that's a really, really nice pesto as well. If and you I don't want any nuts, but you can eat seeds. Right, and I had mentioned that you can use avocado instead. And what I'd made this week, I did avocado and hemp seeds. So hemp seeds have a wonderful omega ratio and they do have a kind of a, a unique flavor, I would say hemp seeds. So make sure that you like the flavor of uh, hemp seeds when before you use them, um, but they're wonderful and they're, they're much more easily digestible, I find for people that have trouble digesting uh, nuts or other seeds. Yeah, so sometimes it's just a matter of what I have um, in the house and sometimes it's um, just trying to try out a new recipe. So I say, you know, get creative as well. Velma wanted to know, did you soak your nuts? I soaked the um, walnuts, but you don't have to. So I just, I just find them, uh, well, Kaylee always tells me that nuts are more digestible. She's a big raw food person and she's always encouraging me to soak nuts. Yeah, going off of that, I would say one of my favorite kitchen tools is definitely the zoodler because I make noodles or pesto noodles um, or cucumber noodles a lot. So that's one of my core staples. If I'm traveling somewhere, I always bring like a little handheld zoodler and I bring my citrus juicer. And if I'm packing, um, checking luggage, I bring a nice ceramic knife. I really love ceramic knives. 
personally, they do break more easily, but I love how sharp they are. Nice. This is my little um, Zoodler tool that I love. It's, um, it's like two or three bucks. Kaylee got me one in Costa Rica years ago, and it's absolutely fantastic. I wish I had a zucchini in front of me. Um, but you can use the fancy Zoodlers. I have the one by Pandero, and it's, it's great. But this little thing is great. And whenever I, if I go to someone's house for a weekend, um, I take my little Zoodler with me. Great for cucumber noodles. So that's another gadget I love. All right. So um, the flatbread. So first up, I'm going to use this fresh made pesto. Um, so again, our flatbread in the oven, it has another five minutes to go before I flip it. And I promise I will show you that process. So I'm going to take it out of the oven. I'm going to flip it very carefully and put it back in the oven for another um, eight, 10 minutes or so. Um, and that's how it works with my oven. You're all going to have to find out what works for your oven. Um, I have my instructions written up, but you might want to play with it. And also the thickness of the crust is also going to, um, you know, be dependent on how long you cook for. So I went ahead and I made one in advance just because I didn't know how the timing was going to work exactly. So this is how the flatbread comes out. It's nice and crispy. Did you hear that? I broke some off. Um, so it's nice and crispy and this is how it looks. Okay, so um, I'm going to place it on a board. And first I'm going to spread on some of the um, pesto we just made. So you don't have to do too much of it at all. It's really just for a little flavor accent and um, a little color. So again, I made all of this pesto. We can use it for all sorts of other things. If you wanted to, if you're not like a pesto lover, then I would, you know, cut the recipe in half. Okay, so I've got the pesto going. And then next up, I am going to use, um, you can use any kind of greens you like. Um, summer mix is great. I, I happen to be a lover of arugula. So arugula is the green that I go to. It's getting a little bit late in the season where I live in North America um, for arugula, but it's a lovely bitter green and it has a whole lot of wonderful nutritional properties. So um, I spread about, an, uh, about you know, a cup and a half, two cups of arugula, or um, you can use um, spring mix of your, uh, or greens of your choice. So that goes on first. And then I use um, some bell peppers. So I have just some julienne uh, bell peppers. I've got red, orange, and yellow um, bell peppers. And you can also use the little, uh, if you don't have bell peppers on hand, it's a flexible recipe. You can use these cute little peppers that um, are wonderful roasted, but we're gonna use them raw. So I pop those on and spread them around and you can see it's getting a little colorful. And then next up I use, um, I like the heirloom cherry tomatoes and grape tomatoes. They come in all sorts of um, beautiful colors. Um, so I've got um, yellow, uh, orange, or sort of maroony color, red tomatoes. And I just, I always use a serrated knife. This is my one thing when you're cutting tomatoes, use a but serrated knife. Can I ask knife. you a question? If we don't have tomatoes, is it okay to use tomatoes? Oh, yeah, you can definitely use tomatoes, I guess. It's not awful. Anyway, but I use tomatoes. You can absolutely use tomatoes. I'm so, just teasing here we go. you. I love that because that's how Ann Esselstyn says it too. I'm just ribbing you. <laughs> so whenever I cut tomatoes, I use a um, serrated knife. Um, and I just, you can cut them in quarters. You can cut them in half, just um, sort of bite size um, little bits and pieces. And then just sprinkle them all over your flatbread, um, probably about half a cup, and there's no limit to the amount of to tomatoes you can throw on here. So I'm just gonna get these tomatoes done. Um, and the reason I use a serrated knife is because when you um, cut the tomatoes, they're sort of hard on the outside and soft on the inside. So the serrated knife um, helps you get through that hard exterior without mushing it um, down so that all the seeds splatter out. So that's the tomatoes. Um, and then I can, and we, you know, and you can leave it just like that, but we'll keep going. So um, I add some tofu feta is one option. So this is just some tofu feta. Um, this recipe is from one of our 
several of our other classes, um, but you don't have to use it at all. You can use whatever kind of um, vegan feta that you, you, you like to use or leave it off completely. And I'm gonna show you another option instead of using this. So that's it. Um, the other option is to get a piece of cauliflower, just cauliflower florets, and um, using a box grater, you can simply grate the cauliflower onto the top. And that gives the exact same effect. Um, I have this cute little cauliflower, cute little um, box grater. That's the one that I really like to use because you can get in nice and intimately and grate some cauliflower on top. That's one topping. Oh my God. <laughs> I you love can... kitchen tools. That's amazing. Oh, I know. I know. This is this is a really cute tool. In fact, if you can find these little box graters, they they're really wonderful to tie onto the top. Like if you're going to a bridal shower or you're going, you want to give somebody a hostess gift. This is a really fun little thing to tie on with the ribbon on the top. Um, and I use it for limes and uh, garlic mm -hmm. and lemons and cauliflower. So, um, and then next up, you can add a little. Uh, Parmesan, this is, a, this is a vegan Parmesan that I make that, um, this one is actually a Brazil nut uh, vegan palm. Optional, you don't have to do it at all. And then um, the last bit, and that's, that's beautiful, right? Looks good, everybody want to slice? Oh my God, um, it looks amazing. I, I had no idea that it would get crispy because the recipe that I've been doing, you, you, it was the same technique that you said, but you bake it, it was, I think it was 350 for 20 minutes and it was chewy. I never realized that you could peel it off the parchment paper and then bake the other side and you would get a, like, a, like a crispy item. So that's yeah. amazing. So I, um, I, I get it crispy. Um, maybe, you know, I do it 425. Um, and in fact, I've got to pull this out. So let's hope that I, I got it right one moment yeah. and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you more about it. Yeah, Absolutely. so this is, um, this is where we're at right now. And this is for 20 minutes. Um, and then I let it just rest a little while. And again, if you do use the, the knife trick, the knives are gonna be hot. So remove the knives with a glove. Um, and I usually like to let it just sit for a little bit here, um, two minutes max maybe, uh, before I flip it over. So at this stage, it's still quite pliable and a little bit soft. I flip it over and then I very carefully, oh. in fact, I would actually put this back in the oven for a couple more minutes maybe. Oh no, yeah. To live dangerously here. So you just keep on, gently pulling back and encouraging the parchment paper to let go of the flatbread. Um, and so at this stage, it is kind of a little bit, it does have a little bit of a chew to, chewiness to it. And it's never going to be crispy the whole way through. Um, it is going to be a little bit pliable in the middle, but it is definitely going to get crispy around the edges. So it's coming off nicely. I don't know if you can see all that I'm doing. And you just got to be a little patient. You can't can't rip it off, or it's like ripping a Band-Aid off, and you pull the skin off. So each time I find resistance, I just move around to another part of the flatbread, and I'll pull it up from there. And I'll just keep going around. Got wrinkles on the bottom. Yeah. Oh, Cheryl made a great suggestion that the flatbread would be great with pepperoni spice. Have you ever tried the pepperoni spice from local spicery? I haven't. I can't keep up with all the suggestions that you give us, Jeff AJ. I still have to get that everything bagel spice. I really want to try that. That's what I've um, done on the flatbread. So when I've made the flatbread and Jill Dalton has given me permission to actually do this on my Weight Loss Wednesday show, instead of putting the spices in the blender, I sprinkle the everything bagel salt-free seasoning on top. It's really good. That sounds amazing. All right. Okay. So ta-da. I think we got it. Okay. Yeah, it's separated. So now I'm going to put the parchment back down and I'm going to pop this back into the oven for about um, eight, 10, maybe 12, I don't know, um, until, until it looks done. So I'm going to set it for eight and we'll check on it. Um, and that's it. So, all right. So we're not done with this yet. So the flatbread's looking good. And um, the um, piece de resistance, if you want to say it, um, is 
balsamic vinegar is what I like to use on top. So I have a couple of options here. So this is the um, Napa Valley Naturals. This is the one that Chef AJ used to recommend and I got hooked on that. But then I discovered California balsamics. Um, so California balsamics has a wonderful range of every flavor imaginable. And if uh, you imagine a flavor that they don't have, suggest it to them because they might make it for you. So anyway, so this is Gilroy garlic. I love the Gilroy garlic. Um, and I'm gonna use this to drizzle over the top of the flatbread. So what I do with this, this is the, these bottles, um, this size, three ounce bottles, have the nice little squirty top. So I just simply make a zigzag um, over the top, straight from the bottle. And it adds flavor, it adds color and um, it really makes it look beautiful. So that is a perfect summer flatbread, in my opinion, or a farmer's market flatbread. Oh my, oh my God, it's amazing. <laughs> I don't know, what's more beautiful, your mother or the food? I'm, I'm going with the food today because I'm hungry. <laughs> Yeah. Um, another, um, you can also use the balsamic glaze. This is one from Trader Joe's. Kaylee likes it. It does have a little bit of um, other stuff in it, you know, like um, car caramel and sugar and things like that. So um, I definitely like to stick to the vinegars and um, California balsamics. If uh, I'm sure many of your listeners are very familiar with California balsamics, but it really is worth having a good um, balsamic. And then, of course, basil. You can um, just... Um, tear it up, um, but it also looks really pretty just as a garnish on top of the board, but I usually tear some up, sprinkle it on top, and that's wonderful. And that's it, summer flatbread done. I'm going to change over the set, and Kaylee, maybe you can talk about what's next. We're gonna move on with the truffles. Sounds great. Cool, well, I do wanna share with you guys something very special. And first of all, that flatbread looks amazing. If you are interested in putting something, a green on top that isn't arugula, I would also really recommend sunflower sprouts. They're so delicious and have a really nice flavor. So you can go to your local farmer's market, get whatever sprouts or microgreens look wonderful and just put those on top as well. So I'm a big fan of microgreens. You can also grow them at your house. I don't know if you're into that, but it's a wonderful uh, trick and it looks beautiful. So um, we have an exciting upcoming series. We were going to wait until the fall to have a next cooking series. And then we got a lot of demand from our current uh, dinner club members. And they said, we want another series for summer. So we listened. And our next series is called Plant-Based Parties, Potlucks, Picnics, and Prep. And it starts on July 22nd. Um, and then it's July 29th and August 5th. So classes are hosted 6 to 7 p.m. EST on Zoom. All the classes are recorded if you can't make it live. And we are gonna teach you how to have a perfect plant-based party, potluck picnic, and how to do meal prep and pack delicious plant-based lunches efficiently because we all know that time is precious and we wanna use the uh, make the most of it. So we're gonna teach you how to host wonderful plant-based parties with these cute little uh, finger foods that are not only delicious, they're also nutritious and they're salt, oil, sugar free. Um, and we're gonna teach you how to create dishes for potlucks that vegans and non-vegans alike will also enjoy beautiful platters, uh, vegan mac and cheese, shushushka, and a lot of other dishes like that. So we give you recipes and eBooks and shopping lists, and then you're invited to our calls and our live cooking classes. You get all the recordings, and then we support you every single day in our Facebook group. We also go live and teach uh, additional recipes every week in our Facebook group. So there's a lot of extra support um, we also make sure to offer, our, offer alternatives. All of our recipes are gluten-free and offer alternatives to soy as well for people with allergies and are always happy, uh, happy to assist with people who have nut allergies as well. So we teach you also how to have picnics and how to batch cook, um, how to really create delicious plant-based lunches. My dad is, you know, benefits a lot from this. My husband does as well. So when you can batch cook efficiently, you can have lunches to go throughout the whole week um, that are really wonderful. So the whole series, all the recipes, all the videos and support, lifetime access is only $79. And again, 10% uh, goes to support food banks, which we're very passionate about. So if you'd like to join our series, you just go to vegannewsdaily.com slash perfect and sign up. And we can't wait to host you. It's always so much fun. We have 
so many members that have taken both our past two series, Meals and Mocktails and Sweet and Savory, and now are joining for our plant-based parties, potlucks, picnics, and prep. So we can't wait to host you and get to know you and support you on your journey to host awesome parties, um, create wonderful dishes for potlucks, and really get your pantry in order um, to make wonderful uh, lunches to go. Um, so I'm going to turn it back to my mom. We're going to get started. And then we do have one more exciting announcement for teens and children. Great. Um, uh, Elspeth, there, uh, so Jeannie's asking, how do you serve it in squares? Does it cut very easily? Or someone else asked, how many servings is that? I would say like one. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? That's exactly what I, I've done that many times. Uh, believe me, it's it's real. It's so good. But um, sometimes I do sh share it with my husband and I just use a pizza cutter. Um, and if you're doing it for a party, obviously you want to you know, cut it up in advance. So I would cut it up in squares and just serve it right on that board or you can put it on a nice white platter. But yeah, just a, a pizza cutter. Um, and again, it's not going to be like crispy the entire way through, but it will, um, it'll, you know, be nice and crisp and make nice little portions. So this, that flatbread, um, I would probably say I would cut it up into about six little servings and maybe um, serve it with, um, in fact, I'm going to reach over, serve it with a great, great big salad. Um, I know my husband's going to dive into that later. And this is his salad bowl. And so I went ahead and made a, a beautiful salad for him. Peaches, blueberries, grapes, whatever, throw that all in. Um, and you could also throw peaches on top of your flatbread. So this is a one time of the year where the peaches are like perfect, right? So use them up every way you can. So that's what I would do. I would also echo that and say nectarines are so good right now. So definitely throw a bunch of nectarines onto the salad. You could even grill those and put them on top of your flatbread. They look beautiful and offer like a really sweet flavor to contrast with the balsamic and with the bitter greens. All right, so um, let's get started on the truffles. I did just take a quick peek at the flatbread and I decided to add three minutes. So I will cancel what we're doing and um, jump back into the flatbread, but I'm going to move on with the truffles. So um, chocolate cherry truffles, but I do have one little story to tell you about truffles. Um, every time I hear the word truffles, I'm taken right back to 19, 1988, 32 years ago in London. I was a 21 year old backpacking granola girl, uh, working my way around the world. And I was introduced to a very handsome, very smart um, American businessman who happens to now be my husband of 30 years. But anyway, so um, one Sunday, my uh, it was very early on, I just met him and my brother suggested that we take a drive out in the countryside and go visit Wind Windsor Castle one Sunday afternoon. So um, we all piled in the car and um, knowing that we were chocolate lovers, we stopped and got Smarties and Smarties are like um, M&Ms, I think, in this country. So. Um, my husband, being the fancy New York businessman that he was, he went to a fancy chocolate shop and um, he bought um, a bag of truffles. So he hops in the car and he said that he, got, he had picked up some truffles and we thought, why would you bring mushrooms on a road trip? Because um, we had never heard of chocolate truffles. We thought that they were truffles that pigs root for um, in France. So he hopped in the car with the truffles and um, little did we know that we got going and I opened the bag and I was like, oh my gosh, these are chocolate truffles. My brother and I just started wolfing them down like they were M&Ms and, um, and Paul was just horrified. He had never seen anybody attack chocolate quite that way because we are chocoholics. But that's the story from there. I um, now know how to make a healthier version of chocolate truffles. And I now know that they are truffles, mushrooms, and chocolate truffles. So here's the truffles. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. So um, first thing I do with the truffle recipe is I soak about eight dates, I soak dates in water, in boiling water, and I'm going to add the dates and the soaking liquid to the food processor. And then I have, um, oh, you know what? I skipped a step. I'm gonna have to backtrack just one moment. Um, Kelly, you wanna tell them something quickly before I, <laughs> I, I um, mess up here? Thank you. Definitely, of course. So um, truffles actually originated in France in 1895 and um, it's where the ball of chocolate ganache dusted with cacao 
received the name truffle. So as it turns out, as my mom mentioned, truffles are actually named after mushrooms, which have a similar name because of their resemblance to the dark and rumpled mushroom. Um, another story is that a chocolate truffle was created in the kitchen of the French chef uh, Georges Auguste Escoffier during the 1920s. So when one of his apprentices was attempting to make a pastry cream, he accidentally spilt hot cream into the bowl of expensive chocolate and voila, the truffle was formed. So those are some fun facts for you. I still see my mom rushing around the pantry. So it's true, she's definitely a chocoholic. We don't keep tons of chocolate in the house because she will definitely eat it. Um, and that's why we've created so many wonderful alternatives. So these truffles are great. You can store and keep them in the freezer or, for, or in the fridge for snacks or for lovely desserts when you have guests over. So we definitely recommend you can make the recipe as is. You can even double it if you want to have a lot of extra. They're wonderful to put in your kids' lunch boxes or to give them for snacks um, to take with them in little bags. Uh, you can even freeze them and then send them with them and they'll kind of thaw out on the way. So uh, great for road trips as well this summer if you're doing any traveling like that. All right, mom, you ready? I'm ready, sorry, forgot an important step, but I just looking to my oven, I'm gonna just open it up and just check on this flatbread. Yep, it looks great. So this is, this is how it um, turns out. So that is the flatbread. OMG, oh, that's unbelievable. Little hot. So super easy. And then pesto, greens, the whole bit. That's it. You could also even make a hummus and put that on top if you want to do a more like Moroccan style. And um, we, in the last show, we'd shared about making the um, stuffed eggplant and uh, homemade za'atar recipe. So that is salt free. So you could put um, some hummus that's oil free on top of the flatbread, sprinkle some chickpeas, some greens um, and some za'atar on top. And that would also be really delicious. So it's kind of a beautiful um, canvas for you to work with and decorate how you want your flavor. Yeah, canvas is the word. All right, so the step that I forgot was to do um, almonds. So I, I put some almonds into the food processor, and I'm just going to pulse these up so that they get nice and um, crumbly. I don't want it. I don't want to make almond butter, so I don't want to go too too long. So I'm just going to pulse this a little bit. So about three pulses, and then I have some nice sort of almond um, chunks. Now I'm going to um, just set those in a bowl and set it aside, and then I'll um, move on with the rest of the recipe. Do you have any other questions? Let me see. Uh, well, people are asking if there's a replay. There's always a replay. So if you're watching on YouTube now, the minute it's over, you can watch it in its entirety from the beginning. Same thing on Facebook. And guys, make sure you are subscribed to me, please, on YouTube, because I have a very, very special broadcast tonight with a couple of celebrities. And I can't announce it because of tech. tech I just, just, just trust me, it'll be when this person's car is not driving him somewhere, probably 8 or 8.30 p.m. tonight, Pacific time. So because I don't have a time, you got to subscribe on YouTube, click that notification bell. And the minute we go live, you will be notified. Yeah, I promise this is one you won't want to miss. Not that this is one you want to miss either, because these ladies are amazing. And if you miss their first two uh, cooking classes, it's on YouTube. They did uh, they did an Italian class. I can't remember. What was the second class you did? And we did um, stuffed eggplant, and we did the fruit tart. And the first class was manicotti and chocolate sweet potato brownies. So definitely yeah, watch the other two shows. So speaking of sweet potatoes, we're going back to sweet potato um, today. So I have the nuts that I chopped and I transferred them to a bowl because I don't want them mixed in just yet. I've got the dates that have been soaked um, in boiling water. And then I'm going to add a um, cup of sweet potatoes to this. So these are just the regular sweet potatoes that I went ahead and baked um, yesterday and let them cool in the refrigerator. So I want to have about, um, about a cup of sweet potatoes. So I'm just going to add that. Julie in. says you are blowing my mind and people are asking where they sign up for your, their class. It's just, it, is it the website veganewsdaily.com? 
Yeah, just vegannewsdaily.com slash perfect is for the upcoming series that's called plant-based parties, potlucks, picnics, and prep. So we'll teach, again, how to host parties, have awesome potlucks, dishes, and how to kind of organize your pantry, do meal prep, and also create lunch boxes. So there's over 25 recipes that come with that, all the uh, class invites, recordings, and support in our Facebook group, which includes even more bonus recipes. Last series, we ended up giving 18 extra recipes to our members because we got so excited. So we definitely provide lots of value um, and we really love the community that we've been forming. So um, it's been a really fun journey together. And so uh, we definitely have a blast in the kitchen. Last year I was able to visit my parents. And so I made guest appearances in the kitchen with my mom a few times, which was really fun. Um, so it was great to cook together. If somebody missed the if somebody didn't take the first two classes or maybe only took one, is there a way to retake them? How, how does that work? Absolutely, yep. They can just go to, if they would like to take our May series, which is called Meals and Mocktails in May. Um, and that was Italian, American, and Mexican. They just go to vegannewsdaily.com slash dinner club May is the link for that. And if they wanna take our um, June series, which was Mediterranean, breakfast, and uh, brunch recipes and Asian, that is vegannewsdaily.com slash dinner club. So first series, dinner, uh, vegannewsdaily.com slash dinner club May. Second one, vegannewsdaily slash dinner club. And this upcoming series is vegannewsdaily.com slash perfect. So um, there's a tab on our website where you can see all of the series. It says dinner club series, and you can select which one you'd like to sign up for. And we'll get you the recipes and all of the recordings if it's uh, for a previous series that you're signing up for. Thank you. All right, so back to the truffles. So I've got dates, I've got um, water, little uh, sweet potatoes, and I'm gonna add some raw cacao powder to it. And then I'm just gonna blend this up together until it becomes a nice smooth paste. And you don't, I, I use the same food process so that I blended up the nuts. It doesn't matter, the nuts are gonna be part of the recipe. I just didn't want the nuts to be too um, smoothed up. So here I go. Ailey, are you a chocoholic like your mom? I love chocolate, but I can have one square and be super satisfied. So I, I definitely love these truffles, but I don't, I never overindulge. I'm just not that kind of person. I think I take after my dad in that department. Like we can have like one bite and get the full flavor and we're like, we're good. <laughs> so I, I never understood that. My mom's like, hi, the chocolate bars. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you're, <laughs> um, right. but yeah. So, um, so I've got my uh, chocolate truffle mixture here, and I'm just going to let, scoop it out and add it to the nut mixture. And then I'm going to incorporate that all together. I love the um, spatula that comes with this uh, Breville food processor. It's worth the cost of the food processor, honestly. Um, so I just mix this all together. And then once I've got the nuts all incorporated in here, I think I might have just th thrown in a little bit too many nuts, but that's okay. It's, this is one of those recipes, again, you don't need exact ingredients, so it's not baking. And then I just place this whole um, bowl into the refrigerator for um, about 30 minutes. If I can find one in my refrigerator. Um, but I have already made some in advance that it's been sitting in the refrigerator um, that I'm gonna use now so okay so now i have my my chocolate mixture and i've got some cherries you can use any cherries you like so i've got the mount Rainier cherries which are wonderful this time of year and then just the regular um bing cherries so um this is where i'm going to show you one of my favorite little um gadgets this is a cherry pitter it looks kind of uh, menacing, but it does a great job on pitting um, not only uh, cherries, but also olives. So you just pop the cherry in the little handle right there. And it also works on olives, doesn't it? Yeah, I use it for olives and for cherries. So the cherry is nice and pitted. Um, and then I just take... Um, all the cherries, get them pitted. And what I like to do is separate the 
piss and the cherries on a platter so that I can count. I have two pits and two cherries so you don't end up with. I do the same thing with dates. Like when I'm making this recipe, I make sure that I have a little container with the date pits in and the, the dates separated so I can count how many pits I have left because one little pit can really ruin a recipe, not to mention your teeth. So anyway, so I have some pitted um, cherries right there. And then I take a little of the mixture, um, and it's easier to do this with your hands a little bit wet. So I have a little bit of water here. You don't want to be too wet, but a little bit damp works. And then I take a cherry, and I just fashion a little truffle out of it by rolling a bit of the um, chocolate mixture. It's a nice thick paste now. So I roll it around um, over the top of the cherry. And I'm left with a nice little truffle ball. Um, and then I like to um, take that and roll it in some raw cacao powder. So I just roll it around in a bowl with the cacao powder. And that is how the truffle ends up looking. Um, and you can serve it so many different ways. I have this, um, I think this is actually for olives that I like to serve it in. So I'll do a whole row of truffles and line them all up. I'm gonna show you one more here. So I just take the little cherry and a scoop of the chocolate truffle mixture. And this makes approximately, I don't know, 20 cherries, but you must pit them um, in advance. So, and I roll that around in the ball with the cacao and pop it in my serving container. Um, and then whenever I make these, I, I had made some in advance. So I'm just going to feed along here. I had made some in advance and pop them in the refrigerator. Um, and then I just roll these around in a little bit of raw cacao. So I have a whole bunch of them going on. And these are somewhat soft. So I'll um, pop them into this container here because um, these have been sitting out for a few minutes. I like to put them in the refrigerator um, just to foam up a little bit and to also get, um, you know, nice and chilled. I think they go that way. Um, and then you can just add some cherries in with the uh, truffles. It's sort of like a garnish, but also shows what's in the truffles. And for people who are following Chef AJ's rules um, of food eating and they're really trying to um, be good with their diet, cherries would be a better choice. So that's how I like to serve them. Um, cherries straight up or cherries with chocolate, your choice. Uh, what about, have you ever tried it with carob powder for people that, I, I, I do know a few people that are actually allergic to chocolate. Have you ever done it with roasted carob powder by any chance? Um, I have, but you know, as a diehard chocoholic, I always go back to um, cacao. <laughs> so what can uh, I say? I well, you know what Dr. Here. Goldhammer would say. I know it's a gateway drug or something like that. <laughs> he's, he's totally correct. I honestly, my husband has, I, I don't know how he does. He has one little square of this beautiful chocolate um, every single night. Just one little square. But that chocolate is in his office behind locked doors. I, I just, I cannot have it in the kitchen. I'm actually really good when I, um, when I just don't have chocolate for a long time. And I think it's all to do with your gut bacteria and the, you know, your mitochondria, the, the, the bugs that you feed in your, your, your stomach. Um, I wake up craving chocolate the next day if I have it. So for me, it's just like I have to have some hard and fast rules, unfortunately. Um, but I want to tell you one other really fun way of eating um, cherries. And this is also, also low in calories. It does still include the um, cacao powder. Or, yeah, I guess you could use carrot powder. But I also pitch... Um, a bunch of cherries that I will uh, just throw into the freezer. Like this, these have just been in the freezer. Um, and this time of year, cherries are abundant everywhere. And then I just pop them into the cacao powder. And these are just amazing. Frozen cherries, raw cacao powder, and nothing else. Um, I think I learned this trick from Dr. Furman. Um, he had mentioned it. And these are absolute little flavor bombs. Um, and then I don't just have them in the summertime. <laughs> I also have them um, frozen in the winter. If you go to, uh, if you live in North America, Whole Foods, you can buy them in the frozen section, dark sweet cherries. And there's nothing but cherries in here. 
just roll them around in a little cacao powder and they are absolutely fantastic. So a couple of different ways to have your cherries. That would be a great way to do it for people that are trying to keep it low in fat and still want the flavor. So, you know, we're getting so many compliments on your clothes. Shane says, Kay Kaylee, she loves your top. Elspeth, I love your top. Maybe you guys can do like a fashion episode. That's funny. She says, AJ, I always feel like we, like, I always love the tops that you wear. So I think we're like uh, on the same, on the same, you know, wavelength when it comes to clothes. And in fact, one of my very favorite hand-me-downs is hanging up in my closet and it's a dress that you sent to me that you weren't wearing anymore. So I'm always open to your hand-me-downs and I'll send you mine. Oh my God. Yeah. You look really good at that dress when you posted that picture. So uh, it, I think it might even be on Instagram. What, what, what is your Instagram in case somebody wants to follow you? I am um, at the Speedy Vegan. So I'm known as the Speedy Vegan, not because I run fast, but because I cook pretty fast in the kitchen. I always um, throw things together quickly. So the Speedy Vegan is me and Kaylee is? My Instagram is Give Joy a Chance and ours collectively is Vegan News Daily. So if you want to see all the recipes we do, we share them on our individual pages at the Speedy Vegan, Give Joy a Chance. And then we also post all of our recipes from Vegan News Daily on Vegan News Daily Instagram. Um, but I do want to share something, Mom. Can I share now about the teens? <laughs> okay, awesome. I want to share with you guys. We had been creating lots of courses for adults, and we thought this summer is different. A lot of children are at home. A lot of teens maybe don't aren't able to see their friends. Um, they're not able to travel or do what they wanted. So we created a, a program just for teens called Cooking Club Teens. So this is a six-part series all about how to cook delicious plant-based um, recipes and they're simple, they're tasty. We've got pizza, we've got tacos, um, but they're all whole food plant-based. We all have alternatives for gluten in every recipe for kids who have gluten sensitivities. Um, and they're just really delicious fun recipes. So we've created an online community. Um, there's six different classes from Italian to American, Mexican, Asian, Mediterranean. And then we're gonna teach them how to make brunch for Sundays and then snack and school lunch so that teenagers are empowered to be able to make their own food. Um, so we love to tell families that, you know, you might come home one day to a freshly prepared dinner and it might have been made by your child or teenager. So this is really ideal for um, children 12 to 18, but we've got 19 year old signed up. I've got adult friends saying, I'm a beginner. I want to sign up for this course. I'm like, okay, if you want to. And we also have um, younger children who are signed up with a parent that's going to take the course with them. So um, if you have a, a child that's younger than 12, that's fine. You can sign them up. So your child's going to learn how to make different vegan cheeses, pizza dough from scratch, how to flavor meals, how to cook without oil, how to read food labels, select organic produce, um, and impress their friends and family and have fun in the kitchen, which is what it's all about. So if your teen or child's interested, uh, you can go to vegannewsdaily.com slash teens. Um, we just ask you to share this. I did not care about cooking as a teenager. And when I got to college, I realized I had no skills in the kitchen. And my mom was like, I've been trying to teach you this for years. So I wish I had listened to her. But if you're not able to get through to your kid or if you don't have time this summer to teach them, we're here. We would love to teach them and inspire them and have fun together. So also, if you guys want the recipes from today's show, just email us at veganewsdaily um, at gmail.com and we will get back to you with the ebook um, with the two recipes. And if you sign up for our July series, which is our perfect series or our teen series, you're also going to get an additional ebook that has 18 recipes of different oil-free salads and dressings. So this is a fun offer we just put together recently and hosted a live class with a bunch of people who showed up. So these recipes are wonderful. Um, really delicious salads, perfect for summertime dinners and uh, lunches. So uh, again, if you wanna join Perfect, you can just sign up for vegannewsdaily.com slash perfect for our July series or join teens. And we can't wait to host you. It's been such an honor to be on today. Um, and as always, Chef AJ is like such an inspiration to us and to all of you. Well, we love having you guys. How many people want them to come back and maybe even be a monthly feature? If so, put some, say, put yes or hell yes in the chat. <laughs> we would love that. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, we would love um, any of you have teenagers that you, you know, want them to learn some new life skills over the summer. Uh, it's going to be once a week. We would love to, or one week this, it's twice a week, but we would love to show them tips and tricks on how to make food really fun and easy um, and get them cooking. 
as a teenager, I love to cook. And um, I think I've spoken about it before, but this is my little black book that I used to take around to all of my friends' houses. And whenever their mother made something nice, I would ask if I could write it down in my little black book. And so this is splattered and falling apart, but um, it's full of fun recipes that I have been adapting um, as I became vegan. Um, but anyway, so that's it. Uh, we would love to have your teenagers with us. We would love to have you with us. I want to show you how effortless it is to uh, prepare good food. And um, yeah, we'd love to see more of you. Wow, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. And thank you guys so much for watching. And please come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time, which is the show's regular time, because we do have a plant-based superstar appearing, Dr. Caldwell B. Esselstyn Jr. It's already gone out to our mailing list and we've gotten lots of questions. So please consider signing up to be on my mailing list so you get preference to your questions. And believe it or not, most of the questions for Dr. Esselstyn are not about heart disease, but they're about his winning the Olympic gold medal. So that's not something he talks about a lot, so be sure to tune in. And of course, I'm sure he's going to talk about heart disease as well. And tonight we have a very special broadcast. It'll take place about 8.30 p.m. I can't give you the exact time because the person is driving today, but it's a superstar. And that's why you got to subscribe on, on YouTube so that you get the notifications. So thanks again, mother-daughter duo, Vegan News Daily. We love your food. We love you. You're beautiful. Your food is beautiful. And you can grace our show anytime you're available. Thank you so much, Chef AJ. It's just such an honor to be here with you, and um, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, your energy is super inspiring, and as always, it's super fun to be in my mom's kitchen virtually. I know we're all so hungry now, so go enjoy a delicious plant-based lunch. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thanks.